We hope you're not feeling sick today, because next up is Weezing. Weezing, over the years, is best known as one of the original misfits from Team Rocket's original antics in the anime, ever since it evolved from a coughing. His trainer being, of course, James. And with the anime, as we all know, most fans' biggest exposure to Weezing is watching Pikachu shock it repeatedly, as with the rest of Team Rocket. However, is Weezing getting bopped every episode also the case for it in the competitive scene? Let's find out how good was Weezing actually. And in this video, we'll be talking about these competitive formats. In the land of Psychics, Rocks, Earthquaking, Tauros, and Snorlax, and other miscellaneous threats such as Zapdos and Lapras, Weezing is extremely bad. It has Explosion, which is great, but other Pokemon can also effectively explode, whilst not being horrendously weak to every Pokemon in the tier, and being effective outside of the Explosion. Also, funnily enough, it's pretty outclassed by Muck, who effectively does the same thing, but with significantly higher attack. This also translates to Underuse as well, although it doesn't really make an enormous difference either way. Way, and is mostly just picking your favorites. Muck even has Mega Drain to dent ground types slightly harder, so it's unfortunately pretty bleak for Weezing in the first generation. But in the second generation, Weezing's rival Muck retained its higher attack but also gained excellent special defense in conjunction with enormous HP to pull off an effective Curse, Sludge Bomb, Fire Blast, Explosion set in Overuse. Which means, unfortunately for our billowing friend, it's once again completely outclassed. It's also ineffective and underused, struggling greatly against Needle Queen and not offering much of interest in general. Thus, it drops to never used. There, however, it is most excellent. It is useful both both offensively and defensively, being able to generate progress in a game with its decent strength for the environment that's backed by high BP moves with strong secondary effects, including Thunder and its new stab, Sludge Bomb, to go along with its trusty explosion. Being able to hold off Primeape and Hitmonlee is invaluable as well, in addition to Weezing generally being able to take a hit or two from most things in conjunction with its ability to respond in a big way. And even though it's still in GSC never used, it's at least an elite Pokemon in that tier. Now on to advance, Weezing became a household Pokemon in the third generation. It gained Levitate, thus making it ground immune instead of ground weak, and also being accurate with the lore since coughing and Weezing both float in the anime. And as we all know, Levitate means that it completely stops the popular and powerful Earthquake, but it also means it's immune to spikes and arena trap. And as for moves, Weezing gained the incredible Will-O-Wisp and made great use of Haze, thus helping shut down the mighty Curselax and Baton Pass, and could take advantage of an opponent such such as Blissey's high HP stat to regain health with Pain Split. In fact, for the earlier part of the generation, it ranked among Skarmory as a tremendous physical wall, especially since it completely dominated the monstrously dangerous Heracross. It was on the top of everyone's threat list and was a major pain for physically offensive teams. However, later in the generation, its popularity eventually died out with its fellow Will-O-Whisper Dusclops, since they were overwhelmed by too much of the metagame and despite certain resistances being useful, their low HP, lack of a reliable recovery and lack of resist to rock, steel, and flying makes them struggle against popular physical attacks such as rock slide, meteor mash, and hidden power flying, especially when coming off of a choice ban. And thus, for a long time, it fell to the wayside outside of occasional appearances by goofy offensive mix sets with sludge bomb, fire blast, hidden power fighting, and explosion. And eventually, one particular stall team that used Will-O-Wisp, Haze, Rest, and Sleep Talk was part of its backbone. But still, these sets, however, didn't catch on. But what did catch on? was Toxic Protect Skarmory becoming the standard set and terrorizing the metagame, especially when it was discovered that Sleep Talk mechanics were ineffective if they were used without burning sleep turns before switching out, and thus made resting more dangerous in 2015. It took a long time after that, but Weezing Spikes and Toxic Immunity, in addition to its powerful special move pool like Fire Blast and Thunder in conjunction with Explosion, made it a fierce and sustainable wall breaker that couldn't be put on a clock like so many of the other dangerous threats in the metagame that Skarmory wouldn't have trouble shutting down. Some creative players even started using Hidden Power Grass to dispatch Swampers looking to Hydro Pump it. And of course, Will-O-Wisp is always a threat, even on offensive Pokemon as shown by Gengar and Moltres. It could even run Taunt to stop status healing and recovery without exploding. This more dedicatedly offensive role is the one Weezing has embraced in the more modern advanced metagame, as it doesn't need defensive investment to check dangerous physical attackers at least once, and thus Weezing is in its most fully realized state now, being in borderline but being effective and overused regardless. 
Now on to Gen 4. At the beginning of early Diamond and Pearl, Heracross was an utter terror, as were other powerful physical threats such as Gyarados and Garchomp. Weezing utterly stonewalled Heracross and could use Thunderbolt and Will-O-Wisp to defend against the others. However, it didn't last. Its meaty fighting resistance didn't mean much else when other common users of those moves included Mixed Infernape, who would gladly follow up with a vicious Fire Blast, or Choice Specs Lucario, who at the time hadn't yet adopted the sword dancing ways and thus was happy when blasting away with Aura Sphere that even Weezing couldn't handle well. His lack of reliable recovery was also especially noticeable when Permanent Sand was augmented by the new Omnipresent Stealth Rock, which, when paired with his meager HP stat, made switching into non-resisted hits like Gyarados' Waterfall and Tyranitar's stab moves even worse. Definitely not reliable to do more than once. Also, the new Heatran absolutely loved picking up a Flash Fire boost from Will-O-Wisp, and to make matters worse, Gliscor was soon discovered, and while it's weak to Gyarados, it was far bulkier both HP-wise and defense-wise, and also sand immune with an instant recovery in Roost, in addition to great speed, so it could totally destroy Tyranitar and Lucario while being an even better counter to Heracross. Gliscor could even keep momentum with U-Turn, and with that, Weezing was totally outclassed, falling to underused. In underused, however, Weezing was an absolute star. While it was never broken, it was always very top tier, up there with the likes of Venusaur, Milotic, Registeel, and Arcanine. In fact, it would also be a pivotal member of balanced teams that also packed those Pokemon, since Weezing was responsible for consistently handling several dangerous threats such as Kabutops, Rhyperior, Leafeon, and Torterra. And when Venusaur was considered nearly banworthy, specially defensive Rest Talk Weezing was often cited as the only true counter. Weezing was also a hugely important piece on stall teams, helping cover Chansey's glaring fighting weakness alongside Spiritomb, who also feasted on psychic types that scared Weezing. It could also use Haze to utterly destroy slow boosters such as Cursed Registeel, and fire types didn't want to eat sludge bombs and get poisoned, so it didn't have much trouble spreading burns with Will-O-Wisp, unless there was a Clefable on the other team. Weezing was never very inclined to go on the offensive in this tier because its defensive capabilities were so consistently excellent, and it was one of the faces of the tier. It was no less than an absolute staple. Now on to the weather generation. Unfortunately, overused was a pipe dream for Weezing at this point. Its flaws, shockingly, did not change with the generational shift, and it offered nothing to combat the terrifying powerful newcomers. It was even never seen in underused either, since underused resembled the previous generation's overuse so closely. And despite actually being decent, it didn't see much used in rarely used as well, thanks to the fierce competition provided by Yuxi and Tangro. Even in never used, it faced incredible competition from Mischievous, who had similar resistances and used similar moves. Its only niche was not being weak to some things Mischievous was weak to, such as countering Golurk and Saucebuck extremely hard. However, Mischievous's overall utility was far greater, and its team could often compensate for these flaws without too much trouble, and thus Weezing had a completely forgettable generation and never use. It wasn't even particularly bad in the lower tiers. In fact, if one were to use it, it'd probably be pretty decent. It just didn't see use because the competition was very fierce. And funnily enough, Weezing saw some gimmicky use for the equivalent of a few minutes in overuse after Aegislash's ban when everyone was afraid of Mega Heracross terrorizing their stall team. However, it was a gimmick, and overuse was again far out of Weezing's reach. It did, however, gain toxic spikes, and this move is so unique and effective that it lends consideration to any Pokemon that learns it. Weezing even had a minor stint in Ubers thanks to its ability to shut down Mega Kangaskhan, some Groudon sets, and even Extreme Killer Arceus while setting up toxic spikes spikes, which are fearsome for staples such as Groudon, Kyogre, Palkia, most Arceus forms, Mega Kangaskhan, and Xerneas. Again, it was also a gimmick, but it was far more viable than its overused counterpart. In the lower tiers, it never saw much usage either, but its role was essentially the same. Cover fighting bug and ground types, set up toxic spikes, spread Will-O-Wisp if the former wasn't a viable option, as it sometimes wasn't in the lower tiers, that had an influx of grounded poison types, and finally use taunt to prevent recovery from its passive damage antics as well as defense. Fog. Again, if it was actually used, it would be pretty good, but it was often overlooked. Now finally, on to Sun and Moon. Overused, underused, and even rarely used are out of Weezing's reach now, but it's pretty good and never used. It can check dangerous threats such as Incineroar and Passimian, punishing their attacks with Rocky Helmet so it plays offense while playing defense, and of course setting up Toxic Spikes that cripples the vast majority of the tier, that enjoys a slow, balanced approach, and thus particularly doesn't appreciate the slow burn. Speaking of which, burn mechanics going down to 6% each turn doesn't particularly help, but damage is damage. Weezing 
protects a good amount of the tier and can, as usual, prevent defensive teams from stuffing its low damage antics by taunting any attempts to recover or heal bell, and of course, those who'd want to defog away its toxic spikes. Weezing is technically PU, but there it's quite excellent, pulling its usual walling antics with ways of striking back like toxic spikes, will o -wisp, taunt, paint split, whatever, and without any fancy new Z moves. Just the tried and true. The only thing that changes for Weezing are the Pokemon around it that it gets walled by. And before we go, you may have noticed that we haven't mentioned VGC at all. And that's because Weezing has never placed anywhere, like ever. At least not in notable tournaments. So yeah, we couldn't find anything. And as to why this is, it's probably just because it's slow, weak, doesn't have the typing to go with its physical bulk, which is still offset by its meager HP, and doesn't counter anything noteworthy, and generally doesn't have the tools, be it move pool or ability, to thrive in a doubles environment. So, say la vie. And that's it, so how good was Weezing actually? After a rough start in the generation it's famous for, and the one afterwards, it had a highly up and down generation in advance, where it has currently ended on an up note, and looks to stay that way, as it has taken on more sustainable useful niches. It was an early star in Diamond and Pearl, but unfortunately, that didn't last. Although it did happily become a bona fide face of the metagame superstar in underuse. It was forgettable in black and white, but unlike other Pokemon who never struck a chord with many battlers, it wasn't unviable, just over overlooked. This continued in the 6th and 7th generations, although with its new toxic spikes, it found a bit more of a definable niche, and it's particularly good in Sun and Moon never use. Sadly, it is the pits in VGC, but then again, so is Skarmory. Overall, Weezing had great tools and was always decent and could potentially shine, at least in the lower tiers. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and of course as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms yada 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 and that's all I got. See you next time everyone.